My next guest says the Fed might need to keep hiking into 2024. Joining me now is Larry Lindsay. He is president and CEO of the Lindsay Group. He was also director of the National Economic Council under President George W. Bush. Larry, it's good to see you and check in on, on your kind of outlook. As Steve just mentioned, the market is not quite up to where Powell is, or it sounds like it, it, close to where you are. Well, I, I, I'm not surprised. The market uh, hasn't been there for a long time. They've been quite skeptical about the Fed's uh, rate hiking cycle. Uh, I thought the uh, the chair did a, a very good job today, um, a much better than he did at his presser at uh, conveying where the Fed was going. Uh, the reasons he gave for the necessity to hike further is, is quite clear. Uh, it includes the labor market. The economy remains quite strong. Uh, core inflation is moderating, but only if you put a telescope on it. So, you know, the Fed is going to have to move. So when so I'm also curious, Larry, because you always have such a good grasp on international. Uh, people have pointed out the asynchronous nature of this. Steve and I have talked about it within the U.S., but even internationally, we've had Europe hiking, China cutting and us holding steady. <laughs> well, uh, there are three different economies and and one of the great things about having different currencies and uh, different uh, monetary regimes is that each one can tailor uh, its uh, behavior uh, to the needs of its own economy. So I guess my question on that is, is it actually a benefit uh, that we have, for instance, China, it sounds like exporting deflation right now uh, at a time when otherwise we could say it, we know obviously Europe is not is no help on that front, but perhaps they face some idiosyncratic issues over their food and otherwise. Yeah, well, the Chinese have one huge idiosyncratic issue. It's called communism. And I know that's not in vogue. But if you look at their behavior, um, what Xi has done is a major power grab that has stood in the way of the efficiency of its economy. Uh, I think they're beginning to realize that. Uh, they returned uh, Jack Ma's associates, uh, for example, to uh, Alibaba just recently. You might remember they they sort of uh, canned him. They didn't push him off the top of the building like they did with some other tech execs. They just sort of disappeared him for a couple of years. Um, you know, is took about half of the asset value of Alibaba, uh, and now they realize they're not going to be able to do such a good job at it. So they put him back in. The their handling of COVID was a major major problem. I mean, we know how disastrous lock downs were for the U.S. population, especially for school children, with regard to psychology, with regard to education and everything else. Uh, the same thing is very much true in, in China. They had more severe lockdowns. Uh, they're not good at handling uh, uh, psychological issues, and they've got a lot of depression, much like we do as a result. The other uh, piece of this is their propaganda exercise is to blame it all on the United States. Well, they've convinced the Chinese population we're trying to hold China down. Well, that's not exactly something that's going to create exuberance for the uh, Chinese population. That's one reason I think that sentiment is so weak. So, Steve, let me turn to you and bring it back to this question of what the U.S. does with rate hikes. And Powell himself made a couple of interesting comments right. where he said uh, we're not necessarily any better than private <laughs> economic forecasters and foreseeing the future and talked a little bit about, you know, what the pace would need to be now, a little bit about inflation and so forth. Um, why do you think the market, which had to be yanked up to where the Fed was uh, many a times in recent months, is not right uh, up to the level where Powell thinks they ought to be right now? You know, uh, maybe I learned this years ago from Larry Lindsay, and I think the answer might be because it hasn't hurt them or paid for them to be wrong about this. It is kind of interesting um, <laughs> that if you've had the Fed wrong over this time, I don't think it cost you very much. I don't know that you could have made a whole lot more money, maybe in the Fed funds futures market, maybe a bit in the bond market. But I'm not sure that you would have really uh, uh, you had it, you'd, you would have had it wrong in the stock market for sure.